church. Morning. Welcome. Welcome to worship on another beautiful Sunday. All you gathered here in the sanctuary and all those joining us online, you're all, it's all wonderful to, to be together in worship one way or another on this fourth Sunday of Easter and also Mother's Day weekend, which is a wonderful weekend every year. And I can see by some of, uh, some of the uh, sparsity of attendance. There are some mothers doing their own thing today, which is what my wife said. She said, you know, I'd really like to take the boys out for a big hike today. And I said, well, I'd really like to go too. Do you think? Uh. <laughs> so I'm here with you. Hey, I love it. I love being here with you. And I want to welcome uh, anyone who's joining us maybe for the first time today, or if you've been here before and it's not your first time, but maybe you hadn't had a chance to introduce yourself. This is your opportunity if you'd like to raise your hand and, and let us know who you are and how you came to be here this morning in, in brief, in brief if possible, but oh my gosh, that's not a visitor, but that is a long time member. Elsie Weaver is back. Oh, it's wonderful to see you, Elsie. Welcome. And that counts too. That counts too. Great to, great to see you, Elsie. Anyone else? Any other visitors or, or guests here today? That Well... Oh, yes, ma'am. Linda, you said? Yes. Well, wonderful to have you here. Welcome. I'm so glad you're joining us for worship, Linda. Seeing no other hands, I'd like to then take a moment to stand up as you are able and turn and greet your neighbor in the, the name, the love of Christ. <laughs>
my friends. Let's return to our seats and continue in the spirit of worship. As I said at the beginning, um, I wanted to wish Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the congregation. And as we celebrate our moms, you know, we also, of course, lift up the mothers that are no longer with us, uh, but whose love continues on. And I have a tender kind of spot today for uh, Scott Bond and Elliot Bond, who I don't think are, are with us in worship this morning, but Scott's mother, Elliot's wife, did die this past uh, Friday. Um, after a brief time at ho in hospice. So our love uh, goes out to them, particularly this morning. And while we grieve her passing, of course, we are so thankful for the love and the life that she lived and the way that that love carries on in her family and in anyone that she touched. I also want to lift up a prayer for Pat Bodwell, a member of, Pat, of, of the church here and very involved with the Board of Buildings and Grounds. Well, Pat's father was just recently placed on hospice so we pray for you on this, this new journey, this new chapter of love and how to care for your father. And we pray for your mother, Linda, and all the ways that this will uh, impact your family in the coming days and weeks. Yesterday, I conducted a small family service uh, celebrating the life of our dear friend and longtime member of this church, Bill Summers. Bill was the custodian up here for a number of years, and I learned that he lived just back here and used to walk up when there was no fence there. He used to walk up the trails to get here uh, to help. But, you know, he lived to 100 years old. Wow. He died last September. Wow. But um, what was so cool about the, the service yesterday is that there were four generations of his family that were able to gather with him. And it was just beautiful to include all of them in celebrating his life so what a gift he was to so many. On Friday, our gathering in meal team uh, created a meal that was so tasty, they got a standing ovation from the people <laughs> they served, which is just great. I just love that. And I'm so thankful for all of those who are so often behind the scenes, um, but doing this incredible and wonderful work, serving the meals every month, and uh, just want to thank the you know, the love and the joy that, that goes into to doing that. If that's something that you feel moved that you'd like to do, please see me after church and I'll put you in contact with folks that you can get involved. It's a wonderful ministry that we do at least once a month. This morning we, we pray for our UCC mission co-worker who's serving in the country of Lesotho. Uh, her name is Danielle Murray Knowles and she works at the Evangelical Church um, in that country. And amidst many socioeconomic and ecological challenges, we pray for the blessing of God on her work and the work of so many others like her trying to, to serve populations that are really struggling for a variety of reasons. So may she know that she is thought of and prayed for today. A few uh, other announcements from the prayer cards this morning. Uh, the first one is that the Spirituality and Nature Group will be meeting once again on May 25th and that's at 1.30 p.m. up in Penn Valley. There's a flyer, and it's a special place called the Troll Knoll. So this looks really interesting. Directions and everything you might want to find are, are here, and I believe there's, a, there's more flyers in the back, so that's May 25th is the next one. Uh, please send prayers of peace and comfort to uh, Karen Morrow, who came home uh, just recently and found her beloved cat had passed away unexpectedly. It was an older cat, but it was, you know, it was healthy, and it's just, it's never easy to lose a furry member of the family. So our prayers, um, it looks like this just happened yesterday, so our prayers are lifted for Karen. And we pray for uh, Judy and her family. Uh, Judy passed away in her sleep unexpectedly. So we lift up prayers of love and comfort for that family. Uh, we pray for a friend of someone in this congregation who has COVID. Um, we pray for their healing. Prayers for Mother Earth and for all the blessings that this abundant, beautiful planet uh, provides um, in mothering us. We have a church work day coming up this Saturday. I believe it's from 8 to noon, right? That's what, typically what it is, or 8 to whenever the work's done. Sometimes it's late afternoon. 
Sometimes we tend to go afternoon, so can we promise that there will be some kind of food to support the uh, volunteers? And what type of food are we talking about? <laughs> Just come and trust that there will be food, okay? <laughs> there will be food. But this, this Saturday, which is the 14th, if I do my numbers right, yes, I haven't lost it. Uh, the 14th, Saturday the 14th, church work day. And this is what I just received. Um, the Lynette Fleisch, Fleischbein? Did I say that right? Uh, the Lynette Fleisch, Fleischbein family. Um, we pray, pray, pray for her family. She passed away on the 16th of April, it looks like. And that's Kara Dilworth's godmother and best friend of Teresa. So, Teresa, I apologize if I didn't get the pronunciations right, but we certainly well, lift up. <laughs> well, um, may, may you and all of those who knew her know the peace that goes beyond human understanding. Thank you. <clears throat> Bible study will resume this Tuesday at 9 a.m., continuing to be on Zoom. I think we'll pick up live classes come the fall, assuming everything continues to go in the direction it has. But the Zoom classes afford us a little bit easier reach for some who are still not driving or coming out um, as often as they did. So this Tuesday at 9 a.m. it begins again. The topic will be Moses, learning from an unwilling prophet. It will be a six-session class exploring how the remarkable life of Moses might have impact and correlation to our own today. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how many ways that, that uh, correlates. So all are encouraged to participate. If you've done Bible study before, you may have already received a Zoom link. But if you haven't, you feel like jumping in for the first time, or if you just need a refresher on what that link is, just contact me. Either talk to me afterwards or, or let me know by text or email, and I'll make sure I get that link to you. And lastly, I would invite, like to invite Susan Moore to the front, our Strength in the Church offering is being received today, and Susan uh, has a brief annou announcement on behalf of the Board of Community Ministries. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Our Strength in the Church offering is a special offering that's one of five special offerings for the United Church of Christ, and it shows a shared commitment to continuing to build the Church of Jesus Christ. You might ask, well, what are these funds used for? And there are four specific uh, ways that they are used. And one is for leadership development, where new church starts in areas of the country where there are not United Church of Christ churches, for youth ministries, and for innovative things that can be done in existing congregations to help develop the spiritual life of people. By your generosity and mine to this offering, we can build up the Church of Christ. This is a special offering that is over and above our regular tithes and offerings. So just put strength in the church on the memo line in your, on your check, uh, or you can put cash into the special envelope that you received today. And if you didn't get an envelope, there are more in the back. And thank you very prayerfully for considering this offering. Thank you, Susan. It has become a proud tradition of our church that we are considered a five for five church. That means we give generously to each of the five annual UCC offerings of which uh, Strengthen the Church is one. So please do prayerfully consider giving to this worthy offering. And, and this, I promise, is the last announcement until someone comes up and tells me differently. Uh, Today was going to be Membership Sunday, welcoming new members. We have a great um, class of new members, but unfortunately there were some conflicts and scheduling, so we just said, you know, we can postpone it. So we're going to move it to next week. So we'll be welcoming new members next week. And with that, I invite you to join me in a spirit of quietness. Let's, uh, let's just root down in our chairs and maybe just allow silent prayer to fill our hearts and if there's a name or other joy or concern that comes up in the midst of this quiet time please feel free to offer it aloud and then i'll close us with a pastoral prayer and we'll say the lord's prayer together
God, on a day like this, some of us might be feeling so thankful and filled with, with gratitude about the love of our mothers or appreciating the, the examples of motherhood that we have seen in our lives and, and perhaps even been able to live out in ourselves and our, our own families. Some of us may be feeling wistful today thinking of someone who is no longer here, or maybe about the mother or the mothering that they never felt like they had. Some of us might be feeling like we're not sure what love looks like in these days that where we feel so pulled in different directions and, and often torn down and where circumstances of life might make us feel like, what are we doing? How do I love when, when this is happening? God, for all the, the ways that love and, and family and, and mothering are, are clear and for all the ways that they're messy and, and difficult, may we allow your spirit to enter in to remind us that it's not about a perfect straight line walk through this life. And as we learn how to love, we learn that love is full of, of mistakes and falling down, but it's also full of, of helping one another back up and of saying I'm sorry and moving forward to love in the best ways we can. God, today, may each one of us find within ourselves a spirit of grace forgiveness and openness to new understandings of our own lives and our own families and our own purpose in this world and help us from this moment forward as best we can to live into being those loving types of people the ones that our mother shaped us to be the ones that that we, we never learned, but we figured out on our own. God, in and through all of it, all of it, help us to walk in your ways of love. That each one we touch might be nourished, might be blessed by the fact that we were there with them. God, in this spirit of discipleship, in this spirit of motherhood, we lift up to you these words that Jesus lifted before us, showing us what, what the walk of discipleship, what the walk of love looks like. Let us pray them together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite you to rise as you're able. Sing the first uh, hymn here. It's in the Hallelujah Songbook, so the black binder there, number 39. It's called In the Secret. to know you I want to hear 
standing and turn to the back side of your bulletin. Join responsibly for the prayer for all of us. Maternal God, you conceive us, give birth to us, nurse us, and smile at us every day. You protect us, feed us, give us words to say, show us how to walk, and cheer for us in our successes. You wipe our tears when we fail, encourage us, dream big for us, and love us for who we are. Thank you that you do not give up on us when we don't call home, forget to visit, disappoint you, neglect what you've done for us, and think we did it by ourselves. Open our eyes to see those who need the embrace of your mothering love those who need someone to be their champion, someone to always give the cup of cold water and go a second mile. Help us this week to take your love to heart. May we embody it like Jesus, with a sure voice, a caring hand, and a tender heart. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture reading this morning is from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10, and I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. May God bless his reading and our understanding of it.
Please join me in the spirit of prayer. God, may the words shared in this time of preaching be more than just preachy, but help them to, to meet us where we most need them and give us the, the ears and the hearts to really listen, that it might open something in us that allows you to break in, because when that happens, that's when transformation and new life also enter in. God, we pray that might be true for each one of us today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm going to admit something. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about sheep. <laughs> I've never owned sheep. I don't really know what sheep eat. I'm not sure how they spend their days or what they really like to do. I, I'm not against sheep. They're kind of cute. I like the little noises they make and when they run here and there. I love the claymation show Sean the Sheep. And if you haven't seen that, you need to. It's very funny. Um, but that's about all I can uh, say about sheep. Um, I've also learned I don't even like wool sweaters anymore because out here it's practically summer all year. <laughs> so it follows that I'm not really that clear on what it means to be a shepherd. I mean, I know you have to shear sheep. You, you need to feed them something and keep them safe from wolves and other predators, but that's pretty much all I got on that one, too. I, I'll admit it. Being a shepherd is not exactly on my list of life goals. So all this sheep language in the Bible is often over my head. Even though I love the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I admit that I'm not always feeling connected to the imagery of that in a modern context. And that's true even though I'm a pastor, and I know the word pastor literally means shepherd. I accept that. And I've also, often also wondered, maybe there's some of you out here in the congregation that really don't particularly care to be called sheep. So <laughs> all of this is swimming within my heart and my head as I come to today's scripture, which is knee-deep in sheep. <laughs> Jesus is teaching his disciples about these sheep who are penned up behind a gate. And he's talking about the shepherd, the one who comes in through the gate and takes care of them. But he's also talking about other people who are not the shepherd. And he calls these people thieves and robbers. And he talks about how they sneak in to destroy the sheep. Jesus finishes by telling them that he is the real shepherd, and the, the one that, that not only who comes through the front gate, but who is the front gate. And he says that because the sheep know the shepherd's voice, they follow him. And, and, and not the voices of the thieves and the robbers. Okay? And that when they do follow him, they, they discover abundant life. Well, as I maybe don't need to say this, but you probably have guessed that I did not major in sheep studies in college. But I did major in theology. And with that major in mind, I have learned that sometimes biblical sheep does not just refer to literal sheep. The Bible, as we talk about often, is a, is a deeply metaphorical book. Jesus taught all the people he came in contact with using illustrations that he knew they would understand. And they got the, the metaphor of shepherd and sheep. They got that. But if Jesus was alive and teaching today, I imagine he would have used a different metaphor for us. Ones that we could relate to better. And so having said all of that, I'm inviting you to hear this story today. Not as one in which Jesus is a literal shepherd and that we are literal sheep, but as metaphor. Hear it as, as saying that Jesus is one who loves us so much that he wants, us, wants to keep us from being destroyed. Hear it as one about the forces of destruction in this world. 
which too often come to us as the wolves dressed in, in shepherd's clothing in this case. Jesus tells us that he comes through that front gate of the, of the sheepfold, and that's where the sheep are gathered. And so what he's saying is, he's not the kind of person, not the kind of savior or teacher who comes in under the railing and tries to sneak in through the side. He doesn't pretend to be what he isn't. Instead, he is authentically and fully who he is. He's a front gate kind of guy. And because of this, because he comes directly and speaks so directly and lovingly to us, we learn the sound of his voice. And when he leads us out of the gate, when he leads us out of our safe places and out into the world, we follow because of that, because we trust him. We say, yeah, we go where you go, because we know we will find our abundant life following you. But look, there are others who want us to follow them too. And these are the ones that Jesus calls thieves and robbers. And now, I don't know about you, but even myself this week, I always thought those were sort of the same thing, just a way of sort of reiterating it, thieves and robbers. And the truth is, it's not, I guess the details here aren't the most important thing to remember, but because I am a certified Bible nerd, I found this interesting, and I, I, and I think you will too. The original text, uh, the Greek word for thieves is kleptes, as in kleptomania, kleptomaniac, okay? Kleptes is the stealthy ones who come and steal things from us by deception, okay? Side door kind of people. And the robbers are the lassites. They're someone who takes by force through violence, okay? So two different approaches here, different people. And here is where I think that we as 21st century people might connect to this metaphor because the reality is, and I think we all know this, we live in a world where there are so many modern day thieves and robbers always coming at us. Now some do come like the robbers Jesus describes with, you know, they have ill intent, they're trained in violence, they want to steal our peace through force, those kind of things. Over, we see them, we, we know that. But too often, they come as those thieves, those ones that are kind of hiding behind, you know, the, the wolves and shepherd's clothing, so to speak. And they're trying to lure us away from what is good, uh, to, to use us for their own purposes. <clears throat> Too often we live in a world that is it's, it's filled with kleptomania, because every good thing that we can do, the, the good qualities that we have, anything that, we, that, that can be used for good, so our hearts and our minds, our time and our money, our love and our health, our understanding and com compassion even. All of these can be stolen away by forces that enter our lives, not through the front gates, but through around here, through the backside. And they crawl under our fences and they blend in until we think, oh, they're just supposed to be here. And if you're not exactly sure what I'm talking to, talking about, has any of you had that experience where you're having a conversation and your phone happens to be in the room? Not necessarily being used, but you're having a conversation with someone you, you, know, you love, talking about a topic or a celebrity, and then you happen to go on Facebook or Amazon or, or Google, and all of a sudden you'll see these pop-ups that pertain to just what you were talking about. That's only one example, okay? Jesus calls these things the strangers, okay? He calls them the strangers. And this is an important word here. Uh, the, the Greek word for the word he uses for strangers, I'm not going to pronounce it right, alop, alopeon, okay? Alopeon. It's, it's a unique word. And I'm highlighting it here because I want to say something that I think is important, and that is he's not calling them strangers because they're the type of strangers that are just the ones who are different from them. Because Jesus was always preaching, welcome the strangers, but when he spoke about that thing, welcoming the strangers, the word he used was xenos, others. That's where we get our word xenophobia, when we're afraid of others. That's the strangers that he is saying to welcome. In this case, he's talking about a totally different kind of stranger. Okay? He's not talking about strangers who are others. He's talking about the strangers that we just don't know. And the strangers who don't know the values that Jesus teaches and lives by. You know, things like goodness, love, mercy, grace. 
All those things that the great world religions have taught for, for generations. Instead, the ones who are strangers to these values, and these might include some who would call themselves Christian, they serve not the forces of life, but the forces of destruction. They wish us harm. Jesus says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, and I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus wants to, us to have that kind of life, abundant life. He wants us to thrive. But in a world where we're promised everything if we just pay enough money, or if we vote the right way, or if we sell out for just long enough, then the thieves and the, the robbers have somehow convinced us that they have the abundant life for us too. We live in a world of so much tension. But I have a pro tip for you. When the thieves and the robbers tell us that they have the abundant life for us, they know what that is. They don't. They're not interested in that for us. They're interested in our money and our time. They're interested in things that they can use and manipulate. And, and even if they did know what the abundant life really was, they would have no clue as to how to actually deliver it. So instead, this passage is trying to help us see that our shepherd, this shepherd, this Jesus shepherd, is the one who can bring us to that place of abundant life, genuinely. And here is again where we had to think with our 21st century minds, because while we may not have had literal shepherds in our lives, I know I haven't, but maybe if we haven't had literal shepherds guiding us and protecting us from evil and guiding us to green pastures in that, we have had those people in our lives who have served that role. And on Mother's Day, we, we think of one of those crucial teachers and guides and protectors, our mothers. But it's also our, our fathers, our teachers, coaches, mentors, friends, our good neighbors even. Whoever they were, these people, they're the ones that have loved you enough to help and teach you and, and lead you on to that next step in your own growth in your life. And so, yes, the Lord is my shepherd, but the Lord is also my parent, my teacher, my coach, my guide, my protector, my encourager. And I need all of those in this world, and I, I would venture that you do too. And we need them because, as Jesus says, the sheep will not follow a stranger um, whose voice they don't know. But my worry, my fear in this modern world is that these days the thieves and the robbers are so familiar to us that we so easily mistake their voices for that of God. And it's, I worry at times that sometimes we just might follow them unwittingly out of that sheepfold and we think we're going down this primrose path and it's leading us to places of destruction. And so that's why, personally, I want to do whatever I can to learn that voice. And I hope we all are seeking to do that. Learn that shepherd's voice and know it when we hear it. And, and, and know also when we're hearing the bad imitation. And then reject as best we can those powers of destruction that don't lead us to abundant life, but lead us to the places where all of a sudden we find ourselves mired in a pit. I want to learn my shepherd's voice because I want to follow that shepherd when I hear him or when I hear her. And I want to follow because Jesus doesn't tell the disciples, look, I'm going to keep you safe through all things. Don't worry about it. No, they're not going to be in the safety of the sheepfold forever. That's why he says, I'm the gate. I'm going to lead you out. I want you to follow me into the world. That's what Jesus was all about. He wants to become that gate through which they walk, through which we walk, so that we can be led to the places where we are most needed, and those are not always safe. And yes, sometimes that means we're going to be walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And a lot of us know what that feels like. But it also means that even in those places, we shall fear no evil, because the Good Shepherd is with us. And friends, as we take that in, and, and, and I hope embrace it anew today, 
recognize that the world needs us to do that. It needs people who will follow the shepherd and be shepherds for this world. For all the good things that we know and love in this world. For the generations to come. We live in a time where we have more than our fair share of thieves and robbers and shysters who will tell us that up is down and, and truth is fiction. And we live in a time that requires some of our deepest moral courage. Maybe now more than ever, we are called out of these places of safety. You know, coming out of these last two years, we are called out of the places of safety and now into the world. And so now more than ever, we are called to discern and to reject the voices of those wolves in shepherd's clothing. And learn to listen together to that voice of the only shepherd who truly wants us to find abundant life. Amen. 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 Uh, you may know that Naomi did have her own life this uh, past week, and uh, that was the mother of. Nona and Ashley, and a member of the Judds that many of us enjoyed. So, um, someone in the congregation thought it might be appropriate and proper to sing one of their very beautiful songs this morning on Mother's Day, remembering all mothers and the love they bring. I gladly, I gladly walk across the desert. With no shoes upon my feet To share with you the last bite of bread I had to eat I would swim out to save you In your sea of broken dreams All your hopes are sinking Let me show you what love means Love can
Don't you think it's time? Don't you think it's time? Sing that with yeah, Love can build a bridge. Yeah, love can build a bridge between your heart and mind. Between your heart and mind. Love can build a Thank you for that beautiful offering. And as we come to the close of our worship today, I'd like to invite you to stand to sing our closing hymn. This song is a beautiful song. Uh, it's also in the Hallelujah Songbook. And whenever I hear it, I think of it as a love song to God and maybe a love song from God. So it just felt like uh, one that captured some of the energy of today's worship. But it's called Draw Me Close, number 68 in the Hallelujah Songbook. Please rise. Help me know.
Before we leave the sanctuary today, I'd like to just remind you uh, that the offering baskets are at the back as you leave. It is not intended to be a pressure for anybody, but if you did bring something, that is where any gifts you may have brought are located. Um, and we so deeply appreciate the gifts and the tithes that you do give so generously week after week. But now, friends, may we go filled with a spirit of God's embrace, of that mothering love of God, and the mothering love that is stirring within us, even if it's just a spark. And may we take the love and the spirit of this, this moment in time, and when we go out there, may we not only follow the voice of the shepherd who leads us to abundance, but may we also use that love to build a bridge especially where we see so many chasms in our world. Build a bridge, because you know why? It's time. It is time. May the grace and the love and the peace of Christ go with you and lead you on. Amen. Amen. When we stand together, we stop by.
all these different yeah. directions. Maybe we need to. What we need is about five thousand dollars to get all of it all to do. Yeah. We've been talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all made it. Yeah. That's a good question. It looks, it looks like it's it almost looks like it's 